Here we go, video two of fluids and electrolytes for 2402 lecture. So uh, let's talk about water intake and output. Uh, these two values are equal unless you're becoming more dehydrated or overhydrated over the course of a day, but generally it's about 2,500 mils a day, so 2.5 liters. That's uh, maybe two-thirds of a gallon, something around there. Uh, these percentages over here you want to know let's talk a little bit about them uh, water intake is about 60 percent from drinks you consume about 30 percent from food your food has water content and then 10 percent of your water needs you actually make and if you remember during uh, cell respiration at the end of it there was the electron transport chain which included a step where oxygen received the final electron from that whole passage of that electron and then grabbed a couple of hydrogens and there you have water. So this is called metabolic water and uh, you make it in your cells. Compare that to the output. So you're gonna, you're gonna lose about the same volume uh, through your urine, so about 60%. And then the, you get a couple of breakdowns over here where you sweat about 8%, your feces aren't completely dry so you lose about 4%. And then there's this figure right here, this what's called insensible loss. Insensible loss is not, you can lose it off your skin. So right now I'm not sweating, you're probably not sitting there sweating too hard, but you are losing water through your cells. Those cells are not waterproof and you're gonna have some evaporation. It's different than sweat because it's not secreted onto the surface, then it evaporates. It just kind of emerges from your cells and goes off into the atmosphere. Same thing works with your your breath and you can prove that by breathing on a mirror and you can see it fog up or breathing on your glasses you can see it fog up so these are the two different terms that describe that insensible which are which is just this little bit here and then sensible which is everything else because you could measure that uh, what makes you thirsty well it's simply called your thirst mechanism there are a couple of things here which I've highlighted in green that uh, that power that thirst mechanism Osmoreceptors in your hypothalamus, osmoreceptors detect uh, the solute concentration of your blood. So if your blood becomes too uh, concentrated, too much, uh, too many solutes, that's going to trigger your your brain to want you to, to make you want to drink. So you'll you'll feel like you want to drink some liquids at that point. Uh, simply, if your mouth is dry, you want to drink water, and that is a sort of an evolved urge for us and uh, all of these are, and then by baroreceptors. So pressure receptors in your blood vessels. If there is not enough blood, ergo low blood pressure, you need to increase that blood volume and uh, you'll vasoconstrict as well, but by drinking water, you'll increase that blood volume. Next slide, I hope, there it is. Uh, regulation of output, what makes you want to lose water and this is mostly through your, uh, your kidneys. So your antidiuretic hormone, which we know, uh, when you produce that, you are going to reabsorb water. When you don't produce a lot of it, you're going to not reabsorb a lot of water. So when you produce, a lot of, produce and release a lot of ADH, you're going to produce concentrated urine and not much of it. When you are not producing ADH, you're going to pee more. So if you drink a lot of water, you're going to cut back on your ADH release and a lot of that water is going to pass, uh, you know, kind of straight through you as it is, as it were. A couple other hormones here, which I'll talk in more detail uh, on the next screencast. And then I want to talk about the two extremes. Dehydration, where if you go, you know, a long period of time without drinking enough water, you are going to lose uh, extracellular fluid which then is going to cause a loss of intracellular fluid. So you're going to lose blood volume and interstitial fluid, which will then kind of draw water out from your cells. And that's not how your cells like to operate. They don't want to operate dehydrated. Uh, it can kill you if it gets bad enough. So can this phenomenon here called hypotonic hydration. Uh, either you can't, your, your kidneys aren't working well, or you're doing something stupid like drinking gallons of water. Uh, if you drink water, you know, pure water without electrolytes in it, it's going to not only leach electrolytes from your cells, 
but it's also going to uh, result in water diffusing into your cells. And too much water in your cells causes swollen cells, which in your body tissues, you know, you've, you guys have had swollen tissues before. Um, not too bad, may feel a little uncomfortable, but if it gets too extreme, it can cause, especially if you're just hype, you know, hypotonic, water that doesn't have any solutes or enough solutes in it, you can experience these symptoms right here, including cerebral edema, which is really bad. In your brain, if you get swelling, uh, it's way worse than your muscles or your whatever, connective tissue or whatever, because of the fact that you've got a skull around it and it doesn't have anywhere to expand. So uh, throws off the physiology and can increase uh, intracranial pressure. And that's it for video two.